Praise the Lord. Praise the word of the Lord. All right, let's open our Bibles up to uh, uh, John, please. John, the uh, 14th chapter of John. We begin to uh, share about different ways that, that uh, Abba, Father, God, manifests healing. And, uh, you know, a lot of times primarily believers, especially nowadays, and no one can blame us. We want to see healing in our own lives. Amen? Nobody likes to get, be sick. Does anybody around here like to be sick? You come on. Who yeah. likes to be sick? Say a show of hands. Nobody. Nobody. But I know that we don't want to see sickness and disease amongst other people. And the biggest one of the, you know, it's a curse part. Of it. We need to understand that. A lot of Christians don't understand that sickness and disease is a curse. It's not a blessing. I know that <clears throat> I've heard testimony, and, and, I, and even my testimony, of the fact that the Lord, in, in the midst of, of uh, sickness, in the midst of adversity, the Lord can. You can get closer to the Lord. Yeah. That's right. And God didn't make you sick saying that you could get closer to Him. But if and, and not everybody gets closer to the Lord right. when they're going through sickness. <clears throat> Many people become better, actually better, and, and, and turn turn away from the Lord, blame God. One thing you need to never do is blame Him. That's right. I mean, if you just just take it on trust right now, God God is good. Amen. Amen. Right. You know, one thing I look look at, I, I see Stevie coming up as 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 a prophetic voice. And uh, and I, I, I pay attention to him and, and, and watch. One thing we need to understand about the, the ministry of a prophetic ministry is always and I always base it just the foundation of it. It's all, always edifies. It always it comforts and exhorts. Those are three things. A lot of people pattern their <coughs> or through a misunderstanding their their their, uh, their prophetic gift. On an old, old, the Old Testament and Old Testament prophets, which usually were harbingers of doom and gloom, uh, and and exposing sin, exposing things. We need to understand we're in a new new covenant. We're in the covenant of, of grace, of love, <clears throat> and God has poured out His, his grace and His love. Therefore, a prophetic voice will always express. The love and the grace and the mercy of God. Amen. Now we're not blind, and and we are to we, if we we see things to warn people about. Amen. But you'll always notice that you know, that was a warning. I've I've given the words lately like that that, that we need to look out for things happening that, that are happening in the world, but but don't be, become depressed over it. Don't become down over it. Which you will if you look at the seen rather than the unseen that God's doing. Amen? This, I believe this off my heart that, that the Lord has told me this, this is the beginning of seven, he called it, to me he called it seven fat years. He said we've been since 2008 in seven very lean years. <clears throat> Although we've, you know, we've survived, and I don't survive, we've prospered. Amen. You know? And, uh, we didn't go under, we, we didn't die, we didn't, you know, <laughs> we might. Get. So it's how much more that the Lord's saying that there's, he's beginning a time of, 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 of fatness. You know, fatness in the Bible is always a, a sign of, of prosperity. You know, poor people that couldn't get anything to eat were skinny. You know, now, never had wants to be skinny now, we know that, but, you know, in the, in the old part, oh, in the Bible, the, old, the, the, the only people that were prosperous you had enough to eat so that you could put on the extra pound. So fat years represent times of abundance. Yet there's a warning that to the world it can still look like it can still look like it's things are bad. <clears throat> In fact, there'll be some scary things probably. And Pamela always gets on me and she says, sometimes I scare her when I tell her things. But I don't, I don't tell y'all everything. 
And I said, don't be scared. It doesn't, it doesn't scare me because I know, you know, the Lord speaking to me and assuring me that, that and no matter what the circumstances, if we'll stay faithful to the Word and, li and stay faithful to listen to the voice of, and, and be obedient to what He's, he's shown us to do, no matter what circumstances, he will, he will prosper you. In other words, he will, you know, I'm not saying you're not going to go through some struggles, but he's going to prosper you. He's going to bring you out of that. Amen? When the plagues came on Egypt and, the, and, <clears throat> and Moses this day, before he led them out, led the, the Israelites out, in the midst of all those plagues, God separated his people Israel in, in a place called, you look at it, read about it, the land of Goshen. It was a, an area of Egypt. And in that area, none of those plagues that, that came on Egypt came on that, that place. As long as the Israelites stayed in that, in that land, it was in that land, in that place, none of the plagues that came on Egypt came on them. That's miraculous in itself, isn't it? Yeah. Now that is a type, we know the Old Testament is a type, you have the types and shadows of that which is in the new. And that's a type, and the shadow of Goshen is a type and a shadow of being in Christ. Say in Christ. In Christ. You are in Christ. If you've received, if you for, you've received Him for the forgiveness of your sin, Amen? God, He, He, he Jesus' purpose was to bring the forgiveness of sin. Amen? You know, everybody sinned, right? And fallen short of the glory of God, right? Mm -hmm. So we needed, we needed to be, that's what separated us from, from, from God. So Jesus came and he died on the cross. It was one of the works he did. He did that. He paid the price. He was our substitute. He was a sacrifice for sin. He did that. He was buried. <clears throat> you know, that was the proof that, that he actually died. He paid the, paid the price. But on the third day, we know this, we need to know this, that, that the Father, by the Holy Spirit, raised Jesus from the dead. And, and he lives evermore. Not only raised him, but he, he, he ascended into heaven, and he's, he's at the right hand of the Father living, ever living to make intercession or prayer for us. Amen. We may touch on that part of the prayer this morning, what he's actually praying for you. We need to realize this, that if God be for us, Paul said it in, in Romans 8, if, God, if all these things come, famine, plagues, all these things, destruction, nakedness, peril of sword, he, he named all these bad things that can happen. He said, he said none of these things can separate us Romans 8, Romans 8 chapter. None of these things can separate us from the love of God that's in where? Where is it? Christ. In Christ. So staying in Christ, you're in, you were placed into Christ when you believed. <clears throat> and you were baptized into Christ. You were placed into Christ. Just like in the, the, uh, the Israelites were placed in Goshen, in a place where uh, they were safe from the judgment that was coming on the world. Amen. You say Jesus took our judgment. We don't. We don't have to. Uh, we have should have no fear of the wrath of God, of the wrath of the Father. Praise God. That that wrath was poured out for us. Our sin was judged on the cross. Your sin, my sin, was judged. Already judged. Amen. And the and the just penalty was paid for that sin, which was the death through the shed blood of Christ. Amen. Praise God for that. So the sin factor in us is, is, not, a, is not, a, <clears throat> not a thing. The Holy Spirit's in us sanctifying us. He's dealing with areas of our lives uh, where we're obviously not perfect. You know, and we miss it. But it's because He loves us and we have that constant connection with Him that He can actually come into our lives and begin to do things to cause us and to conform us or mold us into actually the image of His Son, Jesus. So we should also always be confident. We need to always be confident that it's God working in you both to do His will and to do His good pleasure. That's in the Word of God. 
It, <laughs> say it with me. It is, it is God. It is God. God. Who's working in me. Who's working in me. Both to do His will. Both and to do His will. And to do His good pleasure. And to do His good The will of, you don't have to say this, but we know the will of God. John wrote in, in 1 John, he said, he said, Beloved, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He, so we know it's the will of God for us to prosper. We know it's the will of God for us to be in good health. So it's God working in you to do His will. Now what's His will? We know part of His will is that you prosper. Amen? That word in, in the Greek actually means to have a good journey, a prosperous journey. Because some people have used that verse and said it's been misused by, by prosperity people. But if you're going to take a good a journey, you want that journey to be prosperous, don't you? Don't you want to have enough gasoline to get there? Don't you want to have enough money to stop at McDonald's and get you a hamburger, you know, when you're hungry? You, in other words, you don't want to be beset by bandits. You don't want your car to break down. You don't want to starve to death, you know. That would be an unprosperous journey. Right. You agree with me? So we notice the will of God that he says that, that you prosper, have a good journey, and be in health. And be in health. That means, that means not, not be sick. <coughs> now, I, didn't, I didn't say that you wouldn't fight sickness. I didn't say that, that the enemy wouldn't try to put sickness on you. I didn't say that you wouldn't do dumb stuff and, and, and open yourself up for sickness. But it's not the will of, of the Father. Amen? And we need to get that down into our hearts and that down into our spirits. Because our help comes from the Lord. That's right. So if we ever have any idea that He's the enemy or that He's opposed to us, then when we get into talking about faith in the name, then that's going to hinder us. That's going to hinder us in receiving, in receiving the gift that He has for us, the blessing, the grace He has for us. Isn't God good? That's right. Amen. So I get back to this prophetic word. We need to understand, <clears throat> even in the, if the Lord shows you something or warns you about something, it's for your benefit. Amen. Amen. He's, not, he's not just trying to scare you. He's not a boogeyman trying to scare you. You <laughs> look scared, buddy. <laughs> he wants. He wants to warn you. And uh, and. He wants to assure you that if you, you stick with him, you're gonna be all right. Amen. Amen. And you're gonna come up, out, come out on top. All right. Speaking on the, the subject of healing again, let's. If we found John 14, <clears throat> Jesus was instructing his his disciples and say, "I'm a disciple." I'm a disciple. <clears throat> so he's writing this to you too. In verse 12, he says, "This is John 14, verse 12." Says he said, "Truly, truly, I say to you." He who believes in me, he who believes in me, talking about referring to himself, the works that I do, he will do also. Well, that person will do those works also. And greater works than these will he do because I go to the Father. We talked about that last week because Jesus went to the Father and he sent the Holy Spirit back to the church. So we have the same power residing in us as the body of Christ not just one person, but as the body of Christ, we have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Well, that's why there's each individual gifts. Each of you has a measure, amen, a measure, a, a portion that makes up a body that can manifest the works of Christ. You know, not everybody will be prophetic. Not, not everyone will have a, a, a healing. We can all pray for the sick, but not everyone will have a healing, just a specific healing ministry. Not everybody will be teachers. Not everybody will be preachers. You understand? But there's something, there's some treasure that's been hidden in you. According to Ephesians, when Jesus ascended, He gave, when He ascended, you know, He descended first in the lower parts of the When He ascended, He gave gifts to men. Now they, now, and then He goes on and talks about apostles, prophets, <coughs> evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Those are what we call fivefold ministry gifts. But that, that wasn't all the gifts he gave to men. He gave gifts to men. Amen. That flow through the Holy Spirit. So in each one of you, there's a treasure 
of, of glory hidden, each one of you. Say, me. 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 Turn around and look at somebody and say, even you. Even you. You know, because like, see, we look we look so much with the outward. <coughs> the outward that we don't see the, the inward. Only the Holy Spirit can show it. He says God looks on the inside. Amen. I, I was I was listening to someone say this and, and I know it's true. He says, You you really don't that what you see right now is not the real the real me. I can look at you and I can say I can see the the the, the 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 tabernacle that you're dwelling in, Amen, on this earth right now. And I can I can listen to you and I can hear you and I can catch catch parts of you of who you are, but I really you know, I really don't know who you really are. Only God knows really who you are because He sees He sees your heart. Amen. And and unless the Holy Spirit shows you someone's heart, then we should never, even if you see someone's heart, should never judge someone's heart. God, it's His job to do judging. If it's in the future. <clears throat> so when He so I got He set down the the, the the commandment to walk in love towards one another, because we really don't see what's going on in other people. And see, that, and we also need to understand that that that, that we that since we we really don't know ourselves completely either, and and we interpret who we are through what other people have told us, or we've assumed they've said about us, and, and so there's a mixture. So we want to get to the heart of the matter of who we are. Amen. Who we are in Christ. That's what's, what counts. So there's a treasure. Paul says we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. That the excellency, or the, or the you know, the, the excellency of it should not be of man, but of what? Of God. Amen. So you've got inside you, you've got inside you a treasure. It's the glory, it's the glory God put in you. And one of, the, one of your major tasks in life is to, to discover that. And then allow it to take the dominance in your life, and, and to get bigger than your than your flesh. Amen. <laughs> and it's my job to help try to keep you alive long enough for you to do that. <clears throat> no, it's actually God's job. I just he, he never mind. Amen. And myself included in that. You have this treasure. So Jesus said, "Greater works you'll you'll do than these." Verse 13 says, he said, whatever, this is really cool, it says, whatever, say whatever, whatever, you shall ask in my name, whatever you'll ask in my name, he said, that will I do. Why? So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Anything that you ask in Jesus' name and, and, and is answered, it glorifies the Son. It's not to glorify you, it's to glorify the Son. And we went over last week about the, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the name is the nature. So anything that you shall ask in the name means you shall ask it in the a lot the, as it lines up with the very nature of God. Amen. If I were to ask, uh, you know, to turn you into a toad frog in the name of Jesus, <coughs> God's not going to have anything to do with turning you into a toad frog. Are you following me? Because that's not just because I tacked on in the name of Jesus on the end of it doesn't make it God. He followed me. That's right. it, it, so that's why. Therefore, we need to know. We need to know God and know His character and and know that that when we're praying, we can pray in confidence because we're praying in line with His name or His nature. The name Jesus or Yeshua literally means this. Is, it means Yahweh saves. Amen. Yahweh, the name of God, the name of the Father. I am that I am. Or, what, or, or one translation says, whatever you need me to be, I am. <laughs> you know, he, he is. Anything you need, He is. So, by, by, by His very name, Jesus' his name, or Yeshua, or Yahshua, actually, they, 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 this is all sacred, but it's again praying in line with the name is praying in line with His nature. Amen. And not praying in line. And you can't just pray in line with what something selfishly or self-centered that that you're praying about. And 
and is not in line with his nature. That's why you can boldly pray for the sick. Because it's his, it's his, in his nature to heal the sick. And, right. and one of his, uh, his covenant names in the Old Testament was Yahweh or Rapha, or the Lord that heals, the Lord the physician. Actually, the word is physician, Rapha is physician. So hey, he's, a, he's a doctor. When you, how many of you would expect doctors to be interested in getting people healed? Who would go into the medical profession if they weren't interested in seeing people healed? Right. Now I'm talking about they had a pure heart, not just right. going to make money. But I mean, you'd have some kind of, you know, I mean, the Hippocratic Oath, part of the Hippocratic Oath is, is do no harm, isn't it? Right. You know, so you, you, you've got, obviously got some kind of a vested interest in seeing people get better if you want to be a doctor. Right. Well, one of the, uh, the old covenant names that, uh, that still apply to, uh, to our father, Abba, is Rapha, which is physician. That's right. He's a physician. Amen. In fact, you know, the Jews didn't have any physicians in in Israel in the, in, that, in their their culture until the time of Solomon. And at that time, Solomon he married so many uh, wives. You know, Solomon had a lot of wives. He brought in women from outside the Jewish the Jewish uh, nation, and they brought with them. Their, their, their doctors, their sorcerers, their medical things, and began to co incorporate a lot of that into Israel. Israel had no other doctor until the time of Solomon that we know of other than Yahweh. Isn't that something? That, that, that they, these folks had a covenant, believing their covenant so much that, 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 he, that, 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 that Yahweh himself was their physician. And that, that may be hard for y'all to grasp. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you anyway. Amen? Amen. You have my sayings for your strong got doctors now. Now I'm glad. Praise God for doctors. One of the doctors, most Christians would be dead. But I'm saying that, 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 that the will of God is for you not only to have health, but to also uh, to prosper, but to be in health. And to be in health. Amen? Amen. The enemy will try to deceive you and try to con you into thinking that, that some sickness is going to glorify you. know, you're just like Job. You're going to glorify, you know, and all this. this is, come on, Job. It's old covenant. You're in the new covenant. You're in the healing covenant. Praise God. Amen. So Jesus said, anything that you shall ask. Now, my point about this, I'm just teaching this, y'all. Just be patient. My point about this is that that word ask, he said, that, he said, anything you shall ask in my name, that word... It means this. It means to to, to, to demand. And I, I clarify that saying, I'm not saying you're not demanding of God. Like, you, you better heal this man. I demand it right now. God heal this man. You know, I'm not saying that. But you demand of, you're, making, you're placing a, a demand on the disease, the sickness. If it may be a demonic, it, uh, have some demonic something in there that's causing sickness. Not all of it is. But disease, if you if you'll study the New Testament, the way Jesus dealt with when he healed the sick, he would use the the same word to 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 say be, to heal people that he would use the same word that he used to cast out devils. So in other words, he saw it whether it was a devil in a person or a, a, a demon in a person, or it was a, just a disease. He addressed it with the same uh, reprimand, with the same command for it to loose that person or let that person go. Amen? In fact, as your scientists even know now, you can see this, viruses, the different bacteria viruses, but viruses they found have literally, ha they have a form of intelligence. Now, I don't know how smart a virus is, but it, you know, it has some intelligence. Amen? I mean, some of the people watching my video on this, they might not have a whole lot of sense, but they got some. Amen? So, you know, virus has intelligence. That's why that every year they had to change the shots for the, for the flu and stuff. Because that virus, somehow or another, in some kind of, I don't know how it works, in some kind of mass consciousness, that, that virus is figuring out how to get around that vaccine so that next year it can, it can live. Everything wants to live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's weird, isn't it? Right. Am I saying that virus is a demon? No, I'm not saying that. I think it is demonically influenced. <coughs> Everything evil is demonically influenced. Because I mean, we're using intelligence to talk, you know, figure out ways to, to develop vaccines to defeat viruses, these viruses and things. But you, we need to realize there's, there's something going on that you can actually, when you're when you're dealing with sickness and disease, you need to actually address it as an entity. I'm not saying it's a human, I'm not saying it's a demon, mm -hmm. but at least address it as something that exists. It's not a figment of your imagination. You're not a Christian scientist. It's not all in your mind. Mm -hmm. Your mind has a lot to do with you being sick. Mm -hmm. Are you following? You're not listening. You've got to start. I mean, Jesus talked to fig trees. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got to get over this stuff about being embarrassed to, to talk and talking to inanimate objects. Because mm -hmm. they're all animal. Mm -hmm. I watched the scientist last night talking about the fact that he said in a in a <coughs> in a vacuum, you take all the all the air out. Of, you know, a whole bottle of vacuum, you know, and then and you still you still have in it. Uh, you, you take everything out of a vacuum in a bottle of vacuum. You, you, this was years ago. You still had energy. There was still heat energy in. It. So they, in order to get rid of that, they they developed something called absolute zero. They brought it down to a certain temperature, about 273 degrees below zero, where there's no heat. <coughs> zero. And guess what they found? They still found that that bottle was filled with all these particles that were just breathing. And now I'm not talking about germs. I'm talking about some kind of energy, some kind of matter, something that was, was, that's real is still. So you can't. So you, you, most of what exists in the universe is what's called dark matter. It means you can't see it. Over 90% of what exists in the universe. Now this is just science. I'm not talking about it's, it's, it's not possible for us at this present time for us to be able to see it or but we know it's there. And then and Christians have problems with calling things that be not as other ones. <laughs> well I don't I don't see it, Brother Richard, and I just don't believe it. I've got to see it to believe it. Well, you're ignorant. There's people out there that don't even believe in God. They, they don't bother to say stuff like that because they know there's stuff out there that they can't see that's there. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Get over it. You've got to get over this. That's why Jesus says, He said, anything you shall ask or shall demand or require, to require means you've got to have it. He said, he said, that will I do. He said, that will I do. Now we're going to look at another prayer where he says, we talk about asking the Father. There are different ways to go at this, but we're talking about this right now. He said, anything that you shall demand in my name, he said, that will I do. I, Jesus said, I'll do. And there, the, in the original language, it actually means this. He says, I'll, it, he, I'll do it. He says, he, it means, he says, if it doesn't exist, I'll make it. How about that one? Yes. I've heard reports, plenty of reports going around, you know, about, uh, uh, you know, God's, God's always stepping it up. You know, technology always steps up. <clears throat> Somebody showed me some little device that this morning. I said it looked like a Walkman. Anybody remember what a Sony Walkman looked like? Yeah. It was a wonder of technology. It was about that big, you know, you put a cassette in it, you know, and it weighed about a pound or two pounds, and that was your, your the iPod of my day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you notice technology gets more advanced, and gets smaller, and gets, you know, and, but you, you ever notice this? If you really notice it, where God's moving, allowed to move, He'll do the same thing. He'll ramp it up. Amen. You ever listen? It, and it, there's just tons of reports going on right now of God doing doing uh, miracles and this kind of miracle where there are people that don't have body parts and, the, and the, their body parts are, are growing back. Hmm. I can even remember stories told about me by old-time Pentecostals in England. 
I actually knew, knew, knew a, a couple, two, uh, some brothers that actually came up or, or came up on the, the miniature mess to work for them. I actually saw sat and watched. <coughs> and, and they, the Jeffreys brothers, they had miracles like, they had a man come in that only had one foot. They told him, he said, you come back tonight, go buy your pair of shoes and, and come back. Yeah. You know, one-legged men don't need but one sheep. <clears throat> he said, he told him that night came back to sit down. <clears throat> he said, put put the shoe on your foot there. He said, now, now put the other shoe on the other foot. Now does that make sense to you? There's no foot to put it on. And yet as a man in faith stepped out to do what people used to seem like they had a lot more faith back then. As he, as he stepped out and put the shoe on, guess what happened? A foot grew out of it. Yeah. I mean, you'll see, you, you will see, some of you will see in the times we live in, you will see stuff like that. Some of you may even do it. It won't be you doing it, it'll be God doing it through you. Amen. But it'll be in the name of Jesus, it'll be for the glory of God. It'll be for, it won't be for your glory to get your TV ratings to go up or whatever. <laughs> or you get a ministry. <clears throat> That's why I said that you do it in the name of Jesus. I teach you a little a, a secret I learned about praying for people. If I can do it every time and keep focused on this, is that when I when nobody when, when I when I have to pray for someone for especially for healing, uh, is, to, is, to, is to try my best not to focus on whatever's wrong with them. Not focus on the disease. That's why I, I don't like it when, when, when someone comes for prayer and they, <clears throat> and they want to give me a, like a two-page rundown on what the doctor said. I, you know, you're sick, you need to be healed. I don't, I don't really care what the doctor says. And I don't need to know that. That's not pertinent information to what I do. Mm -hmm. That's right. <clears throat> what I didn't want you to know is, are you? Do you believe God can heal you, or will heal you, or wants to heal you? I want to know where you're at. And then, if if you are, and <clears throat> to when in, in praying for that person, I want to quit beholding the person, quit gazing at the person, quit gazing at the disease, quit gazing at the sickness begin to fix my gaze uh, on the one who's on the cross who's on the cross who who who's who, who's bleeding and because of stripes that were laid on him so that we could be healed. And it's if you if you can if you can, if you can develop your faith when you did then you're having faith in you're exercising faith in not a head knowledge not something you know that happened in the past but it's that present moment that you're you, you're caught up so much in the reality you know I, I, I used to put down the Catholics and the Catholics in their communion or their Eucharist I was told that they believed that the priest had the ability to actually change the Eucharist into the body and blood of Christ. <clears throat> you know, which is obviously to transfer. It's not, not real. But then I heard another uh, Catholic talk about this particular priest that would get caught up, so caught up when he did the Mass, which was mainly communion, what we call communion, that he would get so caught up in it <clears throat> that he'd almost relive what Jesus did. And he would, and he said that the communion represents, you know how we say it represents the body and the blood? He said this way, he says, I represent it. Mm. You don't do it again. Christ died once for all. Mm -hmm. That's right. He ain't died no more for nobody. <clears throat> but, he, but the Holy Spirit can represent it. Show it again. How many of y'all ever watched something more than one? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and literally, 
when when the, the Holy, if we allow the Holy Spirit to represent that to us, your faith, your your faith in, in healing will skyrocket. He said, whatever you ask in my name or demand in my name or require in my name, he said, that will I do, that will I do, that will I do. He said that before it went to the cross. Are you following? We have to look back to, to the cross. But it still, it, it still can be just as real right now as it was then to, to us right now. Are you following me? So we saw, I, I shared this, <coughs> that there was never a time in the book of Acts, the book of Acts, I covered, I believe, 28 years. There was never a time <coughs> when the disciples, although there was, there was a lot of healing in there, there was never a time that the, that the disciples or the apostles, Paul, particularly Peter, mainly were talked about doing the healing in Acts, that they ever prayed and asked the Father to heal somebody. Although they did do healings. Now, now I'm not putting this out. There is a purpose for, for asking the Father for things. Amen. But when we're dealing with healing especially, there, there's nothing to ask him for because he's already he's already sent the answer. There's no question. Listen to me. It's no, there's no question anymore. Like mm -hmm. it's already there. Now I'm talking about just this one type of prayer. We pray when you pray for the sick. We call it prayer. You're actually going to speak, or listen to the Holy Spirit and speak to the to the, to the disease, speak to the body. If you can actually just like you're ordering, how many of y'all ever order pizza? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to make a life. I'm trying to give you some kind of example you relate to. When they, they ask you what you want on it, don't you? Do you, do you ever say, well, I don't really care. Just put anything you want to. Whatever you got. Yeah. You know, you, you, you say, well, well, God knows all. And he knows everything. We're not talking about asking God. Nothing. You're, you're getting somebody healed. You're speaking to the you tell it. You tell it what you want. That's what it means. Jesus said, whatever you require or order in my name, that will I do. And it is limited, sometimes limited. I'm not saying all this, but limited into, into how much you can believe, what you can believe to ask for. But so, I, so I'll say in the book of Acts, you never see. And we'll, we'll look at that. Well, first one we looked at, you, you turn with me to Acts 3. You get anything out of that? Trying to get through the quickest can. We looked at Acts 3. <coughs> I believe it's Acts 3. Maybe it's not. And Peter, the first time this happened, the first healing. Now, now this is real neat. This is worth this is worth y'all coming for right here. I want you to realize this. Peter and Peter is the one that did this. That did, that, that was the one the conduit for this healing, right? Mm -hmm. I want you to know Peter was the one that was such a chicken that he denied Jesus three times. You remember that? And, you know, this, do you know? I don't know. I don't know. That's not what you call boldness. Now, here, and here, you see Peter, he, he's going to the temple and he's, 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 healing, he's healing this guy that's been lame. And that's his second time, and he even launches into a second sermon. He's already preached a sermon on the day of Pentecost. Oh, this is just the actions of a man that, that has so little faith. That he didn't actually denies Jesus. What happened? How did this happen? You know, if you look, in, if you look, you know, turn. In, I think it's Luke three twenty six. You remember this little scenario? Jesus, you know, Peter. You know, Peter's always shooting his mouth off, bragging. You know, like, <laughs> Jesus said. He said, Peter. He's prophesying. Jesus was a prophet. He prophesied. He said. He said, Peter. Satan has sought to sift you like wheat. He's going to put you through the cell to see what's coming out. That's pretty dang scary. And Jesus said, you know, Satan is soft. <laughs> but he said, but he says, but I have prayed that your faith will not fail. And after 
you return, he's prophesying again, you'll strengthen your brothers and sisters. And I, you know, I thought that's a neat, that's a neat thing. Have y'all ever heard that? Did anybody preach? But I thought about that. Peter, the reason Peter became so bold to do this stuff, he remembered right when Jesus taught him in John about anything you ask in my name, that will I do. He'd already taught him that. When, he already had that head knowledge when he chickened out and denied Jesus. Y'all, are y'all getting this? Yeah. But the fact is, Jesus said, I'm going to pray for you. How many of y'all believe Jesus gets his prayers answered? Amen. That's right, man. He said, Jesus said, I'm going to pray that your faith will not fail. How would you like for Jesus to pray for you that your faith will never fail? Mm. Yeah. Wow! Woo! That's a fix, man. <laughs> Glory to God. I started believing that for myself. I said, thank you, Jesus. You're praying for me. That's why I said, you know, Jesus, he said, you know, Jesus died on the cross. He was buried. He buried in sin in the lower parts of the earth. He was raised from the dead on the third day. He said, under the Father, said at the right hand of God, ever to ever live to make intercession. What is Jesus praying for you? You reckon what he's praying for you? Oh, I hope Stevie has a good day. Lord, give him a good day. Let him get, let him get a free French fry <laughs> with his double Mac order. Come on. What do you think Jesus is praying? <coughs> Same thing you pray for people. <coughs> this is me. I said me now. I can be wrong. Some of you know I've been wrong occasionally. <laughs> but I believe this. I believe Jesus is praying that your faith will not fail you. Mm-hmm. That's right. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you're not going to have challenges. Does not mean you're going to have to fight unbelief. That doesn't mean it's, and the devil's not going to keep you to, to try to keep you from using your faith. But it does mean this: that if you will use it, they won't fight. Hmm. Isn't it hard to use your faith? Come on, it is for you. Come on, look here. In the younger generation. Yeah. <clears throat> sometimes it is, sometimes it's hard. Because sometimes you don't feel like it. You don't feel like it'll work. You don't feel like God, you don't even feel like God even knows who you are anymore. No I'm mean, I go through periods of time that I just like I see I'm saying I see angels and stuff. I'm talking to angels and having encounters, angelic encounters with Jesus and stuff. And go for a period where it's like I'm not even saved. I'm not saying I'm acting that bad, but I'm just like, I, where the heck did God go? Y'all never had that happen. You I hope it never does. But I think I think that it, it will because that's that's when you have to use your faith. You know, that's when you have to believe God and use your faith. And He said it won't fail you. It won't fail. So here's Peter. We see Peter walking, and he's walking down, and they're going to the temple at the time of prayer. <clears throat> verse eleven it says, and they were. <clears throat> All right, it's verse one says, this is Acts three one says. Now Peter and John were going up to the, to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer, and a man who'd been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful, in order to beg alms of those that enter the temple. And when Peter and John were about to go into the temple, he began asking to receive alms. He asked them for money. But Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze on him and said, Look at us. And he began to give them his attention. The guy turned his attention toward them, expecting to receive something from them. He expected to receive something. He was expecting. It's good for people to expect. Amen. <clears throat> but Peter says, I do not possess silver or gold, but I, I, what I do have, I give you. What he did have, he knew he had a faith that wasn't faith. <coughs> I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth walk. Seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up and immediately his feet and his ankles were strengthened. 
And with a leap, he stood upright and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple to beg alms, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And we're going into Peter's sermon, and Peter takes occasion, which he always should. Healing should always open the door for you to preach the gospel. That's right. Amen. It's not, it's not, listen, this thing is not just about healing. We talk about have a healing ministry. There really is only one ministry for the body of Christ, and that's to proclaim the gospel. Amen. Which is that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried, and he was raised from the dead, and he lives forever in his Lord. Amen. That's it. Amen. Whatever gets people's attention to believe that goes along. That's what healing does. That's the purpose of healing. Your purpose in life is not to have a healing ministry. Even though you have a lot of compassion for the uh, for the sick, want to see people, and you, you should if you have that, that you know, you understand. <clears throat> but it is an avenue. It's an avenue, a venue, just like miracles are a sign, a wonder, to point people to Christ. Amen. Uh, you need to understand. Please understand that. And you will be hindered in whatever ministry you have until you realize that that's a, that's a, that's the goal. The goal is to, for people to receive Christ and make it more. That's what Daddy wants. Daddy wants he wants more people in a relationship. He wants more sons and daughters. Amen? Amen. You follow me? So Peter preaches his sermon. And he's going to skip down a second time. He says, <coughs> in, in verse 15, he says, and he tells me, he said, You put to death the prince of life, the one whom God raised from the dead. Say there, he's talking about the resurrection. A fact to which you are witnesses. And on the basis of faith in his name, that's what I wrote up here, on the basis of faith in his name, it is the name of Jesus which has strengthened this man. Say strengthened. Strengthen this man whom you see and know. And the faith which comes through him, faith comes, who's the faith come through? Through Jesus. Has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all. This is the whole basis for this Jesus in John saying, anything you'll ask in my name, that will I do. This is what it says. He says it's on the basis of faith in his name. It's on the basis. So any healing is, is done. And I'm talking about divine healing. I'm not talking about I take vitamins. I try to eat right. You can you can get you can get restored to health and naturally. The body wants to heal. There's there's different there's different things that will actually you can get healing. There's even there's even a cult, a cult ways that people will get healing because they just manipulate demons off of people. But I'm talking about what's called divine healing. What I'd call divine healing. I'm talking about a, a supernatural intervention of God, His life and power, to to make to make a person to restore their health and make them whole. Are you out there? Now God, a lot of us got you know we pray and, and, and a lot of us get healed. This way we we actually pray and ask God to speed up the healing. I do that for a lot of people in hospitals. There's another that they don't have faith for divine healing. So I'll ask this, and God said he'd do it. So I, that's when I talk to the Father. I asked the Father, I said, Father, I ask you, would you speak to son? And I'm glad you get that answer, you know. Glad you get that <clears throat> But But when we're talking about, we're talking about, there's no doubt about it, God healed me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Are you following? And it's on the basis of his name. That's the base, the foundation of this ministry of this ministry of healing is, the, is faith in the name of Jesus. Faith in the very nature of God that He wants people healed. He wants people to know that Jesus is Lord. Amen. And He said it's in the, it's in the name of Jesus which has strengthened this man. He said it's the name, it's the very nature of God that's been released to strengthen this man. That you see and know. He says... And that the, and the faith, he said, the faith comes through him. Who talking about Jesus? 
Jesus has, and has Jesus has given him, say given. 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 This perfect health, complete health in the presence of God. Yeah, I want you to notice that one thing right there. It says he said God gave it to him. That's grace. Healing comes by grace. Healing does not come by you doing jumping through hoops. It doesn't you do these certain things where we're not in the old testament, you ain't got to jump, you ain't got to dip in the, in the river seven times to get healed of leprosy, or no, you ain't gonna, it's a gift from God. It's a grace from God that you have to receive. The problem is this thing right here said, the problem is this. You got most of us got so much stuff up here going on in our heads that are trying to trying to talk us out of believing that God wants to give us health. It's flu season. <clears throat> what do you have, man? Amen. I mean, I can fight it off. Thank God. It was anointing, did I? You know, like I got healed last Sunday preaching. You know, thank God for that. I can stay alive just preaching. It, it, all these things you get in your head. Well, I did this. I, you know, I you know I did this. You know, I, I wouldn't. I didn't do this. I did this. And, we have all these things that go on in our brains that keep us from just, just shutting down and just receiving the gift. And anybody ever try to give you something and you try to talk about it and give it to you? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, you know you have. For one, because you don't think you're worthy of it. Or you think we know I, if if I take something they give me if they give me something they receive it they are gonna be expecting something out of me. And they just don't know what a jerk I am. So I'm like, God will heal you even though He knows you're a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jesus. He loves you. He loves you. Let me tell you this little story. I got to get, let me tell you this little story. This, is, this week, we, the grandkids over, <clears throat> the, the little ones, Andrew and, and, uh, and Caroline, were staying at the house. I'm back in my studio in the back, and I'm back here painting, you know. And they got, I got their own little little studio thing set up, and they come back here and they paint, you know. Oh, but they, but they, they disappeared from outside, and one of them come in and said, Here, Papa, we, get, we brought this for you. And it was like a rock. And I got in, 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 in that back room, I have a studio. I got a fireplace, it's an old time house. It's got an old fire, you know, a hearth on it. I said, just put it down and I put the rock down. Go back to trying to paint. In about two, it's not three minutes, you know, I hear the back door slide. He comes in, the other one, Andrew's got, she said, here, Papa. He's got a, a, a big Christmas ornament that was like, you find out in the back. He said, I, just want, I want you to give this to you. <coughs> And about third time, come in, Caroline and me come in together. They got a, they got a stick, got nails in it. They said, "Look, Papa, we want to give you this." They, they know I collect stuff. I collect all kinds of stuff. I got all kind of old cars. I got all kind of collect junk. <laughs> he said, it, "It's for your collection." We, and then they said, "We love you, Papa." Uh. And I said, "Oh, thank you." And so they go back outside and, and get some more stuff. <laughs> and, and it's like it's like and every time they're saying we just want to give you this now they get and I didn't say that to them we just want to give you this Papa we love you oh. we want to give you this it's like it's like they were they were demonstrating and the more they gave to me it's like the more they love me oh. they weren't putting on the more they, I couldn't stop it. Now I know what Moses said, you know, with the builder of the tabernacle, he said he had to stop them from breaking. He said, no more. I said, praise God, I'm getting there one of these days. Y'all quit. You take your money and put it in your car, put it back in here. I got too much. I can't know what to do with it. Go away. Not because you love me, because you love God. But I discovered something right then. This is another better rabbit trade. I discovered this. The more that you give to someone that you love, you say you love, the more you actually start experiencing something different. They were getting, these kids were getting high, bringing stuff and giving them money. They were just like getting, woo, woo. It, it, it says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. I know, I'll find out. 
When they left, it was like, on my, on my, my the hearth of my, the fireplace was just piled up, man. Everything, everything that was in the backyard yes. other than dog doo doo. <laughs> the backyard was clean. Sticks. And they found stuff, they were digging up stuff. They were taking stuff, the bottoms off the pots and stuff they shouldn't do just to bring you know, saucers. And they'll remember too. <laughs> When they left, it was just like a pile of stuff there. It was like just, it was their offering to their papa. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's how I do it. That's what I want you. The more we, what we give from the heart, we say we love him. Yeah. We do love him. But the more we give to him, because he's given us so much. See, as you meditate on so much, on what all, all he's given us, mm-hmm. it's reciprocal. Isn't it neat? So this is a wonderful thing God gave Jesus gave us. He gave us His name. That's right. Amen. What more can you? When a, when a woman, you know, I, I know things are not traditional anymore, but when a when a woman used to be, when they wanted to get married and take the man's name, they wanted to, they wanted to, didn't they? Mm-hmm. You know, now a lot of ladies want to keep their and that, whatever they want to. I ain't getting involved in all that. You know, but that's part. Of, that was that was that was a type of shadow of what God was doing. He married us, Amen. or He's preparing us for marriage, wherever you want in the timeline or the eschatological thing. You want. But He's given us His name. Amen. I mean, Pamela's got my name. Our checkbook has both our names on there. If she can get the checkbook away from her, she can write a check on that. <laughs> if she can find where I got it here, she can write a check. <laughs> now, well, you, if you can find out where that's hid, you can have that too. That's right. Because it's hidden from a lot of people. God's not hiding it, but it's just hidden. It's on the basis of, of faith in His name. Amen. Lord Jesus, I'm running out of time. Let's stand up. I never got to the next year. It's it. Uh, I'll shut up. I'm going to shut up. I preached that message twice. We'll eat we'll going over to the next part. Continue next week. Praise the Lord. Faith in His name. Amen. Now, before, before we go, and, and everything's okay outside, you know, we'll get wet. Before we go, let, let's just right now, let's, let's believe God. Let's ask in His name. If not for yourself, <clears throat> someone that you know that, that has, a, a, has something that, that, that they need healing, they yeah. need our deliverance. Yeah. And let, but let's together, let's just, just take a few minutes and let's don't concentrate on, on that person's sickness. Let's don't pro- concentrate on, on the circumstance, what the doctor said. Let's don't concentrate on, on things that have happened to us in the past where seemingly we failed or, or, we, or it didn't happen. Let's forget the past. But right now, let's, let's be in the presence because he's here. Let's be in the presence. And let's ask. Let's demand right now that the enemy take his hands off our loved ones take his hands off our I, I, I say it right now in Jesus name I command that foul spirit right now to take its hands off this marriage in Jesus name I see you you look like a wolf and I see you, I see you wanting to ravage this marriage. And I see, you see me too. I say to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you in Jesus' name, go. Let go. Be loose from your assignment. Go from that. Right now, you're not ravaged anymore. You're not ravaged anymore in Jesus' name. And I speak right now, listen, I speak right now. I speak, I see it. I see that. I see that. He. I he, see that healing bomb. I see that healing. That healing even extends over into relationships 
I see healing coming right now, flowing down into that place that there's been bites and there's been wounds and there's been there's been a tenderness and and areas to words that were spoken. And so I say this right now. That healing come. I demand it right now. I require it now. It re it's required in the marriage right now for that healing to come right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Make it like a new thing right now, Father, yeah. in Jesus' name. Come on. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Jesus. And then if it applies more than one person, good, you take it. But I know I know exactly who it is. And in Jesus' name, I'm saying it right now. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. In Jesus' name. We speak healing right now. I speak healing right now. I speak healing right now for those that are laying home right now that are sick. It's required right now of that, of that flu right now to leave their bodies right now. It's for, in Jesus' name. I, it's required right now that disease leave their body right now. Come on. You say to yourself, it's required this disease leave my body right now. This sickness leave my body now. Go. I'm speaking to you in Jesus' name. Go. Be gone. Be gone. Healing come. Healing hunt. The paralytic rise up. The stroke victim rise up in the name of Jesus. The person listening to me right now that has a stroke. They've had a stroke. They've had a stroke and they, they, they felt sorry for themselves. They sat in a chair and felt sorry for themselves. They want to end their life and say to you right now, be healed in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Be, Jesus makes you whole. Jesus heals you. Jesus heals you. Rise up in Jesus' name. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Not by my holiness, not by my power, but by the name, 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 above every name. We speak to sickness to bow its knee right now. Yes. Yes. We say I speak to melanoma cancer right now. I see melanoma cancer right now. So right now I speak to it right now. Be healed. Yes. You, that person be healed. That cancer go right now. Their skin begin to heal right now. Their skin they'll be it's healing right now. Coming right now. Yeah. And so we yeah. require it right yeah. now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Diabetes go. Yeah. Speak to you right now. Go, diabetes. Go right now. In Yeshua's name. Demand it. Require it right now. Come on, get your faith out there. You give. Your faith won't fail you. Come on, use it. Your faith's not going to fail you. Use it. Come on. Dare to use it. Haraso, my question. Hosede Sanda. So by the, the face condition that has like a, it's a it's a, a, a rash on their face <clears throat> that's, that's marred their face in Jesus name it be healed right now I speak to that rash be healed right now in Jesus name loose healing right now that rash go the cause of that rash go the, the very immune system be made whole in Jesus name I speak to it right now in the name of Jesus in Jesus name. We command it so. We command it so in these families right now. Command it so these spirits that are controlling their family life and, and, and breaking their marriages. We command it. Stop! In Jesus' name. Jesus. I require it in Jesus' name. Demand it. In Jesus' name. We loose your angels right now to go minister. Angels of God, sent from God. We're going to minister right now. Uh, soften the hearts right now. We get to soften the hearts of people right now. Melt the hearts of people right now. Let them begin to know the, the love of God, the love of God, the peace of God. In Jesus' name we pray right now. We're all agreeing to yes. that this is being done right now. Yes. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. And everybody said, yeah, amen. Lord. Yes, amen, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Oh, God. amen. Hallelujah. All right. God bless you. Come on. Pray. Shoo.